Sher, also known as Red Grape Jones. I'm a multi-instrumentalist, vocalist, songwriter, and music teacher. Welcome to my channel. If you always wanted to play piano, but have no idea how, and you have no idea how or where to begin, well, this video is for you. I'm going to show you the five things that you need to know to get started playing the piano. I mean, by the end of this video, you will be playing piano. Before we get going though, would you please take a moment to like, share, subscribe, any one or all of those things. I'd really appreci appreciate so I can get this algorithm appreciating me, if you know what I mean. That said, I want to start off by going over the two basic schools of piano. You have the more classical approach uh, where you'll start young or you mean at any age, but you'll start, there's a, usually a series of books you'll go through that will teach you how to read music. You'll get more advanced if you want to study professionally. Um, to be, If you want to go to a music school, you'll most likely go to a conservatory where you will focus on reading music and classical pieces. Then there's more the improvisational approach, which is the rock and roll, pop, blues, jazz approach, where you uh, inadvertently must learn music theory along the way as the music theory sort of dictates what you play when, but you decide when and what you want to play. It's improvisational. I believe that there are benefits of both schools. Often you'll find insanely talented classical pianists that can sit at a piano and not be able to play anything unless they have music in front of them. Then you'll have people who play improvisationally who cannot sit and read a piece of music. I'm fortunate that I got to learn both ways and I think that that is the best way to go. There is an immense amount of freedom to be able to sit at the piano and be able to play whatever you want, to make up songs, to play along with other musicians on a, on a whim. That said, it's also amazing to be able to look at a piece of impeccably written music like Chopin or Bach or Beethoven and be able to play it because that stuff is some of the most gorgeous stuff in the world. This video will set you up no matter which school you decide to pursue. The first thing you need to know is that your fingers have numbers. This is really easy, but really important. Your thumbs are one, and then it goes two, three, four, five. Always, everywhere in the world, anybody who plays piano will tell you that this is truth. One, two, three, four, five. So remember that. The second thing you need to know, and I'm just assuming you don't know this. If you do know this, hang tight, it'll be quick. Music is a language, like any other language. And like any other language, music has an alphabet. And it's really easy. It goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I'm just going to give you a little preview here. Word. A, this is an A. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. The third thing you need to know to get started playing the piano is that there are white keys and there are black keys. And that seems pretty obvious. But I want to point out that the black keys are in a pattern. And that pattern is two. And then you'll see there's a little gap where there's actually two white keys. And then there's three. And then there's two white keys. Then two. And then three. Then two. And then three. And then two. And then three. Two, three, two, three, two, and three. 
And, and that leads us to the fourth significant thing that you should know when starting to play piano, and that is finding middle C. If you can find middle C, you can find any other note on the piano. Here's what I mean. Find a, the group of two black keys that seems like it's right in the middle of the piano. Now, if you're using a smaller, like a keyboard, 64 key keyboard or 72, that it still applies. You will see in the middle of the keyboard, there'll be two black keys. This should sound like this. Ba -ba. So you go to the left of those two black keys. That is middle C. Now, if you go to a pair of two black keys anywhere, on the piano and go to the left, you will find a C. Here's two black keys. I'm going to the left. That's a C. Here's, whoops, there's two black keys. I'm going to the left. That's a C. Now, that I know that's a C, well, what's after C in the alphabet? D was after D, E, F, G. What's after G in the music alphabet? A. A, B, C. So I want to I want to double check. Maybe I lost. I'm doing the alphabet wrong. Well, let's see. There's two black keys. That is the white key right to the left of the two black keys. It's C. You can now find any note on the piano out of the white keys. The fourth thing you need to know when approaching the piano is what is important about middle C. Middle C, like I said, is in the middle of the piano. It sounds like this, and it's significant for a number of reasons. It is the dividing point from which the right hand plays and the left hand plays. I mean, this is all, there are exceptions to everything I'm saying, but this is the general rule. The left hand plays below middle C, the right hand plays above. Now I'm playing below middle C, but that's okay, it happens. The other reason why middle C is important is for when you do read music, if you go that route, middle C divides the treble clef, where you write uh, the music for the right hand, and then it divides uh, the bass clef, which is where you write the music for the left hand. Yeah, I think that's it about middle C. The last thing you need to know to get going on the piano is the whole step versus the half step. And to talk about this, I'm gonna have to tell you about intervals. Interval uh, is really just a fancy way of saying the space between two notes. So if I go from this C here down to this G, that is an interval. If I go from this G up to this, uh, G sharp or A flat. We'll talk about that in another video. That is an interval. interval. Intervals can be played one note at a time. And that would be a melodic interval. They could be played at the same time, which would be a harmonic interval. Melodic, harmonic. You just need to know a half step is when you go from one note on the piano and you go either to the left or you go to the right to the next available key, whether it's white or black, that is a half step. So here I'm going to from E to the black key right to the left, which is E flat or D sharp. That's a half step. Now I can go from E up to F. Notice there are no keys in between. That's a half step. A whole step is comprised of two half steps. So if I go from G to A, notice I'm skipping this note here. That's a whole step. If I go from this F and I want to go a whole step down, well, here's one half step, two half steps. So it's going to be right there. And there you have whole steps and half steps, otherwise known as minor seconds.
the half step, or major second, the whole step. So let's get started. I want you to put the first finger of your right hand on middle C. Now the thumb is weird. You don't want to press down on the bottom of the thumb like this. You want to play on the side and you'll see your fingers will automatically be set up to play the next four white keys. C, D, E, F, G. That's going to be weird at first. Your fingers aren't used to doing things by themselves. So this is a really good thing to do every day a couple times. You could do it with your left hand. Everything's sort of mirrored with the left, so it's always going to be backward. So you start with your fifth finger. We're going to go on the C below middle C. Put your fifth finger there, and you're going to play C, D, E, F, G. G, F, E, D, C. I promised you we're going to play a song, and we're going to play a song. Okay, this is a song uh, by Sam Mendes. I kind of love it. You know, I'm not the biggest pop person, but when a song is good, a song is good, and this song is great. Now, we haven't talked about black keys, so I'm going to sort of use a method I just sort of developed with a student to help you see what key to play when it's a black key. All right, so this is what it's going to look like, what you're going to play. And I'll put a link to a diagram for this in the in the in the description setting the hand that moves the most is the right hand first finger on e third finger on g fifth finger on b and you're gonna do that pretty quick one two three four or one two three four then you're gonna jump down here to the g below middle c that's middle C, you're going to go to this G. And you're going to play G with your first finger, B with your third finger, and then D with your fifth finger, and the same rhythm. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to go to B. So if you go to middle C, B will be the white key right below it, first finger plays B, third finger, plays D. And you'll see how my pinky is right next to this black key. It's the first of three black keys. It's also called an F sharp or G flat. But if you don't know what those mean, you should be able to find it. Just go to the closest black key to where your pinky is. Then you're gonna bring your thumb to A. And you'll see if you align your fingers with all the black keys, I mean, <laughs> if you align your fingers with each successive, success, I can't speak today, the next white key, your fingers just kinda wanna hang out there, right? So your first finger plays A. Your third finger is kind of hanging out on C. You want to go to the black key right to the right of that C. It's also the first of that group of two black keys. And then your fifth finger plays E. Now I'm going to sing you a little of the song so you could actually hear it with this pattern. Yeah. You've got a hold on me. You don't even know your power. I said a hundred feet, but I fall when I'm around ya. The left hand's pretty easy. The left hand, you have your first finger on the E below middle C. One, two, three, four. 
Then you're going to reach down to G with your fifth finger. One, two, three, four. Now you'll notice how my fingers just automatically hover over each white key. Well, the next note I need to play is B, and I'm right there. One, two, three, four. And then the next note I need to play is A, which is conveniently right before B. One, two, three, four. So it goes like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, would you please have mercy on me? Take it easy on my heart. Though you, you get the idea. Well, I hope you found this video useful and helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll be expanding on this style of playing in more videos that I'll be releasing every Thursday. So please like, share, and subscribe if you found this information helpful and you'd like to hear more. I'll also be sharing with you along the way more of what I do musically, uh, some of the songs I'm working on, how I work on my voice. Uh, how I work on piano, I've been learning guitar and bass, so I'll be sharing that with you too. So have a really lovely day. Thank you for being here.